What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another weather forecast here by Asian Weather Forecast. In this video, we're going to be looking at Invest 97L and soon to have 98L. 97L is a storm in the middle MDR actually getting close to the Luster Antilles. And then the soon to be 98L will be the one off the coast of Africa. We're really watching these storms closely as there's very favorable conditions. And these storms could very well possibly be Laura and Marco. So that will bring in some big threats for portions maybe of the Gulf, maybe for portions of the Caribbean. That's exactly what we're watching for. We actually have tracks now for 97L. Models have shifted 97L to possibly a panhandle landfall, which is actually what I expected. And 98L, uh, it's all over the place as far as Texas, Florida, that's going to really be all over the place. But 97L, we kind of have a pretty good thought of where it will go and how much it could strengthen possibly, especially with those very favorable conditions. But not, uh, soon to be 98L is a little bit on the other side where we kind of, it's a little too, way too far out to possibly tell, uh, say all that. But in this video, we're going to be looking at the storms here on satellite imagery, the comb timing, uh, possibly potential tracks, what models show conditions and all of that. Before we get into the video, please subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button also, hit the subscribe button to show your awesome support. And thank you guys so much for 3,000 subscribers. I can't, it means a lot to me, guys. Thank you guys so much for all the support. So here's a look now at here, the uh, style imagery and RI brightness for the whole MDR. And here's this one system here that can very well be 98L. And here is 97L right here, uh, heading towards the, the Lesser Antilles and the Windward Islands. This is where we do have 97L. Possibly it has a 50% chance for development in the next five days. And I believe a 20% chance for the next 48 hours. And here we have here, uh, soon to be 98L. It has a 60% chance for the next five days and a 20% chance for the next two days. As you see, these storms are in the middle of the MDR. You're thinking, isn't there shear, shear and all that? Well, actually, there's actually not that much shear um, in the MDR whatsoever, which is exactly why these storms have a chance to possibly be named here. So the thing is here, this could very well possibly start developing some uh, convection here. But this is actually looking a lot more better, in my opinion. This, uh, this uh, disturbance is looking a lot better than 97L in my opinion, but we're gonna be watching this very closely as maybe this could be developing more convection. The thing is with 97L, it's moving way too fast. I believe it's moving 28 miles an hour. So this has, this has to really slow down to really get some convection, blow up and become a system. If not, this won't be named until it gets to the Western Caribbean. And this is looking pretty good. I think this could be lower. I think this could possibly be named sooner as it doesn't have, it's not moving that fast and actually has uh, more more of a moisture bubble. And this year really won't be an issue. It's going to be all behind it. So that's exactly what we're going to be watching out today for more convection and structure. So here's a look now at the Invest 97L tracks here. These are early track cycles. So this is like right when it becomes an Invest. These are very early, so do not take these 100%. As you see, possibly being right here in the next 24 hours. So definitely a very fast moving storm. And then it gradually starts to slow down here. 72 hours, 96 hours. It kind of slows down here from this to this. It's going to be very slowing down. But as you see, it's expected to go south of Jamaica, between South America, and then possibly start taking a northern turn maybe into the Panhandle or the eastern Gulf of Mexico. People have been talking about Texas. The only way this will actually make its way to the Western Gulf is if it's very, very weak. With this trough and high pressure, it's going to be really uh, guiding towards a big turn to the north because of a trough and incoming cold front, which will be attracting this low pressure. So that's the only thing. I think at this point, it's going to be really slowing down because of trough and then possibly really attracted by this cold front there incoming the southeast. And that very well will also attract it towards the southeast instead of the uh, Texas area. So it would have to be extremely weak. Uh, and the thing is, this, we have very uh, variable conditions here. The thing is, it's moving very fast. But it's expected to slow down very soon. As you see, it's kind of expected to slow down in the next 72 hours. So that's perfect time. It's 2,000 miles away from Florida, the panhandle. So it's going to be like, what, 3,000 miles away if it hits Texas. So either way, this thing will have way enough time. This thing has enough time to really strengthen. And the more this strengthens, the more likely it takes that northern turn into possibly Florida, Alabama. So we're really watching out the eastern Gulf very closely. Texas, I'm not really sure about 97L. Uh, GFS, on the other hand, shows 98L possibly hitting you guys at the, or uh, affecting you guys um, but really, I think this is going to be more of an eastern Gulf storm, whether it's the panhandle, whether it's 
the uh, Alabama area. I think this is definitely going to be more of an eastern, uh, eastern Gulf threat based on the conditions and the mathematics with the timing and all of that. Here's looking at two tracks that are at, or four tracks that are actually forecasting 97 now. As you see, there's AVNI, which hasn't been the most accurate tracks, and this shows it going up there and then going hitting Cancun and going to the Western Gulf. That's probably because AVNI should have been very, very weak when it has very warm waters right here. Obviously, it's moving pretty fast, so you're thinking, oh, it's not going to be a named storm because it's moving so fast. Well, it's going to be moving fast in the next 48 hours, but it's going to slow down a lot. It will slow down a, a, de a decent amount. As you see, look how it goes from 24 hours all the way up to 48 hours like that, and then look at 72 and 96 hours. That's a big gap. That's a big slowdown if you compare that. So I think this is definitely, uh, the more this slows down, the more likely. We also have a lot of stored potential energy here. Uh, in the Western Caribbean, so this has to bl this has to strengthen in that area. No matter if it's moving fast, it has hundreds of miles from here to here to strengthen a, a good bit. So I think this is definitely going to take a, a possibility like this. Maybe this is possibly an outcome. I know not a single track here shows it, but you're going to be seeing it in the future and in the in the next uh, uh, the next slide here what I'm talking about. But I think the CEM2, I think this one, I don't think this will happen because this shows it strengthening way too much, I think, like blowing up. I don't think it's going to happen because of the speed, at the, the rate of speed. But I also don't think this is going to happen. I think it's going to go right between these uh, these uh, models and then go like this, something like that. Or something like this, like where it goes like this and then it has like, oh, that's actually the worst, the worst area I've ever seen, like. Something like this, you know, something like that. I, I think Panama, I have a really good feeling about Panama City or Apalachicola for some reason. I had the same feeling about North Carolina for Isaias and it ended up hitting there. So, you know, it's really going to keep a lookout. But we're going to be looking at the tracks here really quickly here. So here's another track here what I'm talking about. Like I said, here they are some swimming possibly going into the panhandle. Like I'm saying, look at this. As you see, there they are right here, possibly going boom and then right into the panhandle. We have... Two models showing the Panhandle, one near Pensacola, one heading for Panama City, and then we have one or two going to the Western Gulf. I do not see that happening, really. I think if anything, it's going to be like, if it's anything, it's going to be like this, possibly. This is possibly a very good, very well likely track here. I think it's going to kind of follow that green model and then go like this into the Panhandle. So I think the Panhandle definitely has a good shot for this to be hit. I think this will possibly be Marco uh, instead of Laura. I think Laura will be 98 uh, I think 90 or soon to be 98 uh, might form faster all right strength will this be a hurricane well we only have a couple models tracking this we have one two three four five six seven showing this and we have four getting into a tropical storm we have three actually getting it to a cat one as you see could be a tropical storm as early as 36 hours or as late as 108 hours I think this could be a tropical storm as around the 60 hour time frame due to the speed but when it starts slowing down i think it could get to that uh, to that point but you see three models get to a hurricane and even one gets it to a category two you know i think that the ship model is pretty i think this is pretty this is on something i think it's really showing it here uh moving way too fast in this time frame and then once it gets in those really extreme warm waters and where all that moisture is there's going to be so much moisture in the western caribbean it's going to skyrocket i think that could very well happen i think as we get closer and closer more models will show getting to tropical storm force winds and we have two showing it staying at the tropical depression and av and i you know they they weren't the most accurate here so yeah dry air dry air you guys are probably thinking it's a huge threat it took down josephine well, actually, drier and sh uh, drier actually won't be a big threat with this um with these storms really. So here we have uh this one off the coast of Africa there, and then as you see, we're having a little bit of drier extending it this way. But these storms are going to be going this way. They're going to be going or 97 L is going to be way south there. So you think it's not going to get affected, which it won't. Actually, drier actually won't be a big threat with this really. As you see, this storm's going to be really over here all the way over here and there's no there's basically no dry air there's actually a ton of moisture coming off the south south america air which is the reason why the eastern pacific is so active so i think definitely really uh p p big potential here in this general area and then the mdr there's like no dry air so i think both these storms really have some big potential here uh, or it could be significant because dry air is really to the north of these storms i mean the mdr i like to have has no shear or no has sorry has no dry air and then look at this the whole area right here this one can very well blow up as it heads towards the eastern gulf so i think
definitely uh, these storms have uh, don't really have that many flaws. I think they have a lot of pros uh, for the development and condition wise. All right, so this is another reason why I think actually 97L could possibly blow up here. Uh, look at that ocean heat content right here, right there in the, in the southwestern Caribbean. That's exactly where that storm will go. The ocean heat content, the amount of stored energy basically, because how warm the waters are. We have, I believe this is meters. We have uh, over 80 degrees Celsius waters and 150 meters deep in the ocean. Which means if anything goes over this region, it's going to definitely, it's going to definitely become a big system here. Uh, whether it's a hurricane, whether it's, it's definitely going to grow, whether it goes there or there. I think there's definitely some concern here. If this storm does slow down before Jamaica and it goes over this general area between Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, which it will, that's a big concern for possibly really strengthening here. And as it goes into the Eastern Gulf, I think it could even be even stronger in the Eastern Gulf because of the very warm waters here and all of that. Speaking of warm waters, look at these SSTs right here. Look at this general area. Absolutely melt these wa waters. This one's right here. Look at this. If it goes through here, it's going to go through some cooler water, 29 degrees Celsius, maybe 28 degrees Celsius. Actually, it's more to the north. It's going to be right here, all right? It's going to go like this, all right? It's going to go like uh, possibly, most likely, I don't know why I can't draw this good. All right, there we go. It's going to be like this, all right? 29 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius, and then boom. So then it's going to going over 30 degrees Celsius waters. Boom, 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 boom. It's going to do that for a while. It's going to do that for a while here, even if it goes like this. It's going to be over these extremely warm waters for a long time. Look at these 32 degrees Celsius waters right there off the coast of Florida. And look at that. We saw that, that sort of heat potential right here, all right here. And there's also 31 degrees Celsius here. So this storm will definitely become a named system. And it might actually blow up maybe RI in the eastern Gulf because it's so favorable. These waters are super warm. There's not going to be any drier. Only thing is there's some there is some shear, but... Honestly, based on the GFS, which is very good for shear, sort of bending that shear where that low pressure is going, it's going to continue to avoid all that shear, especially in, in the eastern Gulf. So I think we have to watch out for the whole east, the whole Gulf in general for a landfall. But if we're going to really watch out for anywhere, it's going to be Alabama and the Florida and the, and the kind of the Panhandle in this general area. I think this area definitely has to be on high alert for a tropical system like that that can possibly head that way. I think there's definitely some concerns here. Even though it's a, it's a week from landfall, exactly a week from landfall, but really these waters are so impressive here. It's absolutely mental. If this storm's like that, it will totally blow up. It will totally blow up, which is why I think this could definitely become a hurricane and maybe even a U.S. landfall. Same thing with 90, student to be 98 L possibly expected to maybe do like this. This is kind of what GFS is showing like that, or this is what CMC is showing like that, something like that. I think that's definitely possible. I think that's really possible. I think definitely the storm is going to, uh, people were thinking it's going to do like an Irma like this. I don't think it's going to happen. You know why? Because if it's going to go all over these land, it's going to be a lot weaker than we thought. So the weaker the storm is, the, the, the less soon that turn is. So I think it's until it passes the, the keys like that, that, that's, it won't take that turn until it actually goes like this because, because it finally goes over those very favorable warm waters because it's going to be kind of on and off like this, like this over land and then like that. So I think they could definitely, I think really Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, Panhandle, I think you guys definitely have to be on the lookout for the next day. So if you're right here in the, between this and that black line, you definitely want to be the watch out for both storms, whether it's 97L or even soon to be 98L. So here's a look now at the GFS. Here, here we have this storm. Uh, obviously the one that came out for Africa and here's the one that is now 97L confirmed. As you see GFS shows it's possibly being going right there between the uh, Central America area and as you see shows it right there at 1006 millibars and watch closely the GFS is actually showing this storm off the coast of Africa blowing up. So here's here's the one that could be 98L and here's the one that's 97L. They're going to be like right behind each other really so it could do the same track based on the GFS. And as you see GFS takes 97L towards the uh, towards the Atlantic, uh, the Western uh, Western Gulf. But lots closer with the GFS showing, really blowing up for some reason. 984 millibars near Jamaica, 986 millibars, 974 millibars for Cancun. 
and eventually the blowing up in the Bay of Campeche and making landfall for the Texas and Mexico border at 953 millibars. I don't want to be the the person to tell you guys, but uh, if you like live in Texas, if you live in Texas and you really want to store them. Hey, to say it, I don't, that's definitely, in my opinion, not going to happen. I really do not see that happening. Let's check out the CMC. CMC has been one of the most favorable uh, models overall this year. As you see, there it is, those two storms, actually, right there, the Lesser Antilles and then the one that came off of Africa. The what? The CMC shows this uh, 98L taking more of a northern track. I agree. I don't think it's going to go this way. I think it's going to be more of a northern track, which is why it's going to bring more concerns for the eastern gulf. But look what CMC is showing for the uh, 97L, 1,005 millibars in the next 108 hours. Possibly going to go up there and go straight for the uh, panhandle. Look at this nine, soon to be 98L, 994 millibars possibly for that time frame for the areas of the Caribbean. And look at that. There it is, CMC. Let's actually go in the, actually right here, shall we? CMC takes this a 97L up into the Florida Panhandle and makes landfall near Pensacola. I think the CMC, I think that can very well happen. Let's check out what it shows for maybe soon to be 98L, possibly going just over uh, Cuba, going across the uh, other areas of Cuba, like kind of Irma did, and then going up into possibly towards that general area of more of the central the Central Gulf Coast and making landfall possibly in the Alabama and Mississippi border. I actually agree with the CMC on both these storms. I think these are actually both very reasonable here. Uh, I'm talking about track, not strength. Um, but I mean, strength seems pretty reasonable in my opinion as well. But track really for CMC, I think, I think that seems really reasonable. Check out the Nav Gem. So there it is. Nav Gem shows both storms there. As you see, a lot weaker though. And as you see, Nav Gem kind of shows that ninety that one off of Africa disappearing. But look what it shows for 97L. A thousand two millibars there in the next 114 hours. And then possibly going straight into the areas of the eastern Gulf as a pretty big storm. They're pretty significant there. Maybe could be doing something like this. Maybe go like that. That could be what this that could be what the uh Nav Gem shows. Let's go ahead and check out quickly now what the icon shows, and then we'll actually check out the conditions here. Alright, this is actually the new icon. It's actually reloading here perfectly. So new data. As you see, there's Icon, there's both storms. Here is the one off Africa, and there's the one here in 97L currently. As you see, Icon really is showing that one really taking off here, that one off Africa really taking off way faster than this one here. Yeah, I think I think Icon and CMC are definitely on the something. I think this one off of Africa would definitely form sooner than the one on 97L because it's moving so fast. And look at that, Icon's definitely on the something. Could be showing what CMC shows. That's very, very interesting here. Let's check out the conditions. As you see, we have a big tropical wave right here in the MDR. So that's going to be protecting these storms from dry air. As you see, big area of moisture coming from the Eastern Pacific and Central America, which is exactly why the Eastern Pacific is so active. We now have a hurricane there as well. And watch, that, all that moisture from South America is going to be going into the Western Caribbean, bringing big threats for 97L. Here's 98L. There's 97L, or soon to be 98L. As you see, GFS is taking this more south, though. But look, look at that big moisture there. So much moisture here. Not much dryer to really become a threat. So I think there's definitely some concerns here with no dry air. Wind shear. Wind shear is going to be a threat as well. Look at the MDR. Basically no shear whatsoever. There's some gaps with zero knots, which can really help these storms really organizing a lot instead of what it did with Josephine. As you see there, we have a big gap with shear as well in, the, in even the Southern Caribbean, which is going to help 97L thrive. As you see, wherever 97L is, it's going to thrive. Look at this. Look at where 97L is. There's so much shit to the north. Look at that. But watch. Watch what happens. Very, very interesting what happens here. It's actually going to the western Atlantic. Look at that. This is where this is where 97L is. Right there. No shear. All of it's to the north. All of it's surrounding it. But watch this. All that all that uh, shear to the north. Watch this. Completely disappears. Really kind of dissipates. And kind of disappears really so that's a big threat if it does go towards the florida panhandle so guys i hope you guys did enjoy the video please don't forget to like and subscribe and bye guys